Um, so hello everyone, my name is Kimberly, I'm your host and academic advisor at Hospitality Academy, and it's a great pleasure to welcome you to, to, to today's exceptional guest lecture. We have the privilege of hosting Dr. R.L. Fernando Garcia, a renowned expert in the field, who will guide us through the fascinating topic <clears throat> of unlocking the hospitality mosaic, the past, the present, and the future of DEI, diversity, equality, and inclusion. But before we begin on, on this enlightening journey, um, again, I'm going to wait a little more, a couple more minutes for our participants to join. But uh, Dr. Garcia, how is your day treating you so far? Well, the end of your day. Well, I'm very, very excited, Kimberly, for this particular masterclass. It's been a while that I was being invited for such masterclass. So it will be a good comeback for this kind of initiatives. And Looking forward to engaging in a productive discussion with all the participants. Well, we're very, very excited to have you. Um, I imagine more uh, candidate or participants will be joining throughout uh, the talk. So I will just get started. Um, again, if you've just joined, uh, I'd like to extend a, a warm welcome to everyone and for this special guest lecture. Um, like I mentioned before, we're extremely fortunate to have Dr. R.L. Fernando Garcia with us today um, to talk about hospitality and DEI. Uh, throughout this presentation, we encourage your active engagement and participation. Um, again, if you also have questions, you can write them in the chat box um, and we will answer them at the end. Um, and before we begin with our guest lecture, we would like for you to write in the chat box where you are from. So for example, I'll write my name, Kim Davis, and I am from the USA. Just to see where, you know, everyone is, is from your home country. So we're able to see all, oops, I did good. Sorry, Ecuador, the United States, South Africa, Italy, Colombia, the Philippines, Peru, Zimbabwe, France, India, all around the world. Egypt, currently working in Saudi Arabia, amazing. So we have a very, very diverse group of participants for today. Um, with that being said, I am going to um, launch a question in which um, all the participants can answer um, that will be shown up on your screen. So this first question is, have you ever felt excluded or discriminated against because of your race or ethnicity? So you can answer that on your own uh, viewing on your Zoom, and we'll be able to see the percentage. So again, have you ever felt excluded or discriminated against because of your race or ethnicity? Okay, so we have 33% of the participants said yes, and 67 participants said no. Okay, so we can have a little better idea on that. Thank you so much for participating. Um, and now um, we can begin. Without further ado, I will hand the virtual stage over to Dr. R.L. Garcia, Fernando Garcia, excuse me, as he takes us through unlocking the hospitality mosaic, the present or the past, the present, and the future of DEI. Okay, great. Can you hear me, Kimberly? Okay, great. So once again, good morning, good evening, and everything in between, <laughs> I would say, to all the participants for today's masterclass. So based on the first poll, I believe we have participants from diverse countries, I would say. And then transitioning to the second result, what was the result again, Kimberly? 33% said 
33% said no. And then 67 uh, said, or excuse me, 33% said yes, 67% said no. Again, it's a, a diverse what combination of answers. And at the same time, I strongly believe that today's topic is something that all of us, including myself, can truly relate with, especially in the context of hospitality industry. So at this point, I would like to focus first on <clears throat> defining these three concepts and how does it play into this goal of DEI. The best way to describe these three important terms is actually to put them together in one equation. Beginning with the first element, diversity. When we say diversity, to make it simple, it only refers to all of the characteristics and experiences that make each of us unique. Diversity is a fact in all the businesses, not just in the hospitality industry, which is why we will always expect, take note, all social groups, may it be at home or may it be at work, to be diverse. It will be a fact from now until tomorrow. Now, understanding diversity is just one. For the past decades, a lot of labor groups across the globe had this clamor to what we call now equality or equal opportunities. From the phrase itself, a lot of labor groups recognize diversity. But this fact in the labor force poses a lot of threats because if we have a diverse workforce, it opens up to what we call a lot of biases at the workplace. That is why labor groups keep on fighting and clamoring for equal opportunities. The good thing is, a lot of companies already responded on this call, but we, we are still on the long way to go in achieving equality across all dimensions in the workforce. That is why another term, inclusion, which is about being connected in the workplace, is a new thing and a buzzword right now. It is actually a need to provide an environment in the workplace where people feel included, secure, connected, and have a strong feeling of belonging. So to recognize, to recap this particular equation, DEI, or diversity, equality, inclusion, aims to, number one, recognize diversity. Second, provide equal opportunities. And finally, ensure workplace performance. So at this point, let us revisit what is DEI looks like in the past. Next slide, please. There are three key terms here. In the early 2000s, major global hospitality companies began to expand their acceptance of non-English speaking personnel. This is when the best practice of what we call right now blind hiring was developed, in which candidates are evaluated solely on the abilities and qualifications rather than their age, race, or other factors. So this is a significant step to address diversity and to provide equal opportunities. Another significant initiative that occurred was the desire of hospitality chains to expand the participation of females in management, leadership, and executive roles in order to reduce what we call gender biases. Another best practice was formed 
as a result of this, which is now known as ERGs or Employee Resource Groups. Many hotels form ERGs to help underrepresented groups in their workplace, such as LGBTQ+, women, and people of color. Employees can use these groups to network, exchange experiences, and promote change. As a result, we can see now in LinkedIn and in all other social media sites, female general managers, executive chefs, and other traditionally male-dominated roles are becoming now more common. Eight years ago, or I would say seven, nearly eight years ago, major hospitality chains announced their full support for the United Nations Sustainable Goals or Roadmap for Sustainability 2030. Out of the 17 goals for the 2030 agenda, there are four that are closely related to DEI, which are number four, quality education, number five, gender equality, number eight, decent work and economic growth, and finally, number 10, reduced inequalities. I would say that that was the bold move of United Nations to get a global support for this particular goal, the DEI. Despite of these achievements, current statistics, both worldwide and local, just like the two polls that we had, your countries, and then your experience as to discrimination, it only revealed that our industry still has a long way to go to reach this aim. But let's talk about some good news first. Next, please. Where are we at the present? You can see the Global Gender Gap Index Report for this year from World Economic Forum, showing the left side of your screen, showing the top 10 countries that are really doing well when it comes to closing the gender gap. Gender gap is one aspect of the EI goal, wherein the goal for, gen for closing the gender aspect is to provide equal opportunities for male and female in various social economic dimensions, may it be political, salary, voice in the community, and so on and so forth. As you can see on the report provided by World Economic Forum, Iceland is on the top of the list. See, they are really, really doing well in terms of addressing DEI. One of the notable uh, initiatives of Iceland, just to give a picture of what they are doing good. We can all agree that inside a workforce, not only in the hospitality industry, for example, in front office, in front office, you will see male and female front office team members. Most of the time, or I would say in general, they are doing the same level of job in a certain period of time for every shift. But unfortunately, a lot of countries pay differently because of their gender. Iceland was one of the countries that started to address this inequality. In 2018, the government of Iceland launched this what they call equal management wage policy wherein they are encouraging in 2018, the word is encouraging, to that all companies pay the same level of wage regardless of gender. Two years after, hear me out, this is the catch. In 2020, the year of pandemic, what Iceland did, from encouragement, they are now requiring companies. In fact, 
that requirement, they need to secure a certification that they are paying the same amount across all positions for men and women. And if they will not get certification, they will, in, they will have to pay for fine on a daily basis. So the burden is now on the employer and not to the employees. That is why the World Economic Forum recognized island initiatives. The one that I have mentioned is just one of their many initiatives to close the gender gap. Similar to top two and top two, top 10. Despite of these initiatives, as you can see, the figure on the right. So Kimberly, just to add on this discussion, can you identify on the right side your continent, please? Where are you? Sorry, I have to move my head one way. North America, 95 years. Where are you? I'm right here. This dark, dark North blue. America, you can see. How many years? 95. 95 years. So according to World Economic Forum, it will still take 95 years for the countries in your continent to close the gender gap. You say 95 years. Can you help me identify the Southeast Asia where Philippines is? How many years? hundred and Thank you very much. So we are double. We are double your years. That's the forecast. In my recent hospitality conference, I think three months ago, when I also presented the same statistics from World Economic Forum, one of the participants asked, so why bother? Why bother about this goal? Considering that we are talking about what? Hundreds of years before we can even achieve this. And the question is, are we still here when this goal will realize? My answer was as simple as, we owe this to the future generation. And our steps, what we are doing right now, will directly contribute to the achievement of this goal. Let us further explore this through two polls that we have uh, prepared. Kim, can you help me do some polls? Ah, sorry, <laughs> I was muted. Uh, the first question is, uh, do you believe that people from other or from different origins have equal opportunity in your community? I just launched that. So do you believe that people from different origins have equal opportunity in your community? I'm just waiting for some more. Right now it's 50-50. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, 50-40, it's still going. I'm just waiting for a few more people to participate. Okay, we'll leave it at that. 57% uh, said yes and 43% said no. Okay, so consistent. Consistent to the result. Still, yeah. still, there are out of the 17 participants right now, what, 57% said yes, congratulations. But still, there are 43% saying that we still have to do something. Let's go to the second poll. Yeah, uh, this one is... Have you taken any steps to educate yourself about diversity and inclusion issues? Have you ever taken any steps to educate yourself about diversity and inclusion issues? Three more people.
Okay, so 77% of our participants said yes, and 23% said no. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Majority said 77%. They have taken in steps to educate themselves about diversity and inclusion in issues because that is the most important step, beginning the conversation. We should not be demotivated to this number saying that we have a long way to go. As the popular saying says, it starts with small steps, big successes. And therefore, I am pleased to know that even if we have participants from the hospitality education at this point, we are now talking about this DEI because that is a significant step that we should take in. So at this point, thank you, Kim, for assisting me on this call. Now that we have understood and appreciated where DEI started, and now that we have the statistics describing where we are, I think to close and conclude this masterclass, it's very interesting to understand where are we heading? What is the future of DEI? I have read articles from leading hospitality and tourism journals that talk about DEI. And this journals presented some empirical evidences on what are the best practices on how we can contribute to the global goal of DEI. A majority of the published journals will have the same top initiative, which is about it should all be strategic. So when we say it's all about strategic, DEI goals in the hospitality industry should not be pure sentences. It should be something that is linked to the overall vision of the company. When we say strategic as well, it should start from the top. The reason why this, is, this topic is very close to my heart as an HR professional, it is considered as HR leaders are the ones who should campaign and drive together with the top executives these goals in the companies. In our group, I am part of SM Hotels and Conventions Corp in the Philippines. We are part of the land, la largest conglomerate, conglomerate in the Philippines. Currently, we have 10 hotels and 10 convention centers across our country. We are going to double up our inventory in the next five years. Currently, we have around 2,000 employees. And we are looking at doubling that to get, as we expand our portfolio in the next uh, five years as well. Part of our vision and strategic goals is to really support DEI. And we have already started that. Number one, goal is to achieve gender parity. Our group, we intend to significantly narrow the gap in the next five to 10 years. I'm very happy to say that based on the statistics that we have, we are now sitting on 58% male, and 42% female across our group. So it's like what 8% gap in terms of gender distribution. We know we still have a long way to go, but we are now starting the conversation. Another goal or initiative that we are doing is to increase the number of women in traditionally male-dominated roles. In our corporate office, we have... We have right now 52% female executives who make critical decisions for the company. In our properties, ah, I am very, very proud to say we are very pleased to have female 
chief engineers. Two of our properties, we have female chief engineers. As we all know, engineering department in the hospitality industry traditionally is a male-dominated department. Right now, two of our properties, we have female chief engineers heading male uh, uh, male-dominated groups. Another milestone for us, a month ago, we have opened the newest property in our group, Lanson Place, Mall of Asia. And part of this opening, we also welcome the very first executive, the very first female executive chef in our group, leading a group of 16 team members, seven 13 of whom are men. Another milestone for our group is that we create opportunities for inclusive growth. For those who are following me in LinkedIn, you will see that I am sharing milestones in the completion of management and leadership programs. We have signature programs like Rise Beyond for the middle managers and Lead Beyond for department heads, execom, and uh, general manager. I am very pleased to report that out of the 200 participants for the past three years, 48% of whom are females. And we are looking at developing our future female general managers for our upcoming properties. To conclude, we recognize that our DEI efforts have a long way to go. Beyond gender, initiatives that focus on other minority and marginalized groups are still a source of concern. Addressing issues in our industry requires an integrated strategy that includes education, inclusive practices, and ongoing commitment. We can overcome the stigma attract diverse talent, and create more inclusive sector for the future by illustrating these efforts. I hope that when we return on what we call own spheres of influence, because right now we have how many participants? 20 plus. Once we share this um, recording, we're talking about maybe 100. Each one of us, we have our own sphere of influence. And hopefully, after this master class, as I said, it's not only about starting the conversation. It's not about talking about this DEI for 31 hour, 30 minutes, one hour. But the most important part, if we are in agreement that this is a priority, we have to continue the conversation even after this master class. And I hope we will do this. Because despite of the fact that we are looking at hundreds of years before we can achieve this, still, I will overly emphasize, we owe this to the future generation. And we have a role to play. Thank you so much, Kimber. I think at this point, uh, we can entertain some questions from the audience. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Garcia. Uh, for this presentation. It is now time to open the floor to your questions or discussions. You can take a moment to type your questions or comments in the chat and uh, he can address them right now. So don't be shy. Make sure to write them in the chat. This is your time to ask about anything related to the presentation or even maybe personal experience that if Absolutely. you... Don't be shy. <laughs> Don't be shy. Okay, so one question says, do you think in the future would be more inclusion for other genders as the community of LGBTI? Yes, I would say yes. In fact, in the Philippines, just to share with you, the LGBTQI++ community 
has been very, very active when it comes to asking for equal opportunities. And at the same time, uh, hospitality industry is very notorious when it comes to uh, inequalities and biases. I am very happy to say that four years ago, uh, one of our hotels here welcomed our very first transgender intern who served in the front office and was also awarded as the best intern of the year for that particular year. It was a baby step for us, but in the hospitality conference where I recently participated, I am also delighted to know that not only our group, but actually it is a consolidated effort right now, a collective initiative across all hospitality groups I'm speaking in the Philippines, we are now becoming more open for opportunities for LGBTI. And I'm sure in other continents, they are now recognizing the importance of also doing the same. How about in, in your country, Kimberly? What's your experience right now? Well, I, I work in LGBTI Spain. I work in plus. Spain. <laughs> okay. So I currently work in Spain. Um, and I think it's it's on the right way. Um, okay. However, in terms of the United States, I think uh, the United States uh, is very, very progressive, in my opinion, okay. uh, in, in, the, in the terms of my own workplace in the U.S., um, is very Good. progressive in the inclusion um, in the workplace. But again, I can't necessarily speak to you um, in hospitality specifically because I don't work okay. in hospitality, <laughs> but very good. Very good. Actually, in Bangkok, if you will go to visit no, Thailand, which is also known as uh, among all Southeast Asian countries, is very advanced in terms of DEI, you can see and notice hotels, luxury hotels with trans women in the front office, which is not a normal thing in other countries. But now they are setting the tone that it's possible. This particular landscape that is impossible in the past, it's now becoming possible. So to answer that question from Victoria Ramirez, <laughs> let's okay. hope. Let's hope that this is something that we have to look into in the next coming years. Good. And uh, the next question is, how would you advise those who are bullied at the workplace because of their nationality or race? Well, we have two things here. Number one, for the person who is bullied, he has to be assertive as well. As I have mentioned a while ago, we are now in the process of training our team members, you know, the Rise Beyond and Lead Beyond, the management and leadership um, programs. One of the main topics on these two programs is the need for us to become assertive. I love to define assertiveness. And I always say assertiveness is about fighting for your right while protecting other people's right. So if you are being bullied about your nationality and race, we are encouraging our team members to be more assertive as to their right. Because the DEI, equality and inclusion, is something that you have to fight from your end and do not wait for others to fight for your own right. And therefore, we are really encouraging our team members to be more assertive so that the DEI goal is not only something that are being uh, initiated by others. DEI should start from us. I know it's hard, but we have to start doing that. The second part of this is that we are now in the process as well of reinforcing the message from the top. That's why I said a while ago, it should be strategic. We have to keep on talking about these things so that people will also know that we are advocating DEI and bullying is not uh, being tolerated in the company. In fact, six months ago, 
we have written and uh, released a policy that the name of that policy is anti-discrimination law or policy that we are saying in all our hotels and convention center that we have zero tolerance when it comes to bullying and workplace discrimination. So I think it is something that hopefully will continue uh, protecting team members as to this kind of discriminations. Um, just to piggyback off of that, we had a follow-up question of, of how to defend someone who's being bullied at work. Maybe I guess, and this is in regards if they're being bullied for their nationality or race, how maybe how yes. to be an ally. Correct. So how to defend someone who's being bullied at work? As I said, it should come from the top. That is why global companies right now, I'm happy that, that um, they are now being responsive as to this uh, goal. For instance, going back to my corporate policy example, part of that policy saying it's a serious offense. So meaning, once proven, the company has the right to terminate that person who committed uh, workplace bullying or, and, or discrimination acts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, this next question, I'm just going to rephrase it a little bit, but maybe how would you address um, maybe other coworkers who still think that women can't maybe be as good as a CEO as men or maybe a similar position? How would you address that or, um, yeah. So how to fight people who still, I think, similar to how would you advise those who are bullied? Two things as well. Number one, for the person who feels that he or she deserved that spot, he needs, he or she, she needs to be more assertive as to her rights and believe that it is possible. As I have mentioned and shared right now, 52% of our executives in our group are female team members. In fact, our executive vice president, Ms. Peggy Angeles, who is leading our group, is a female. Our counterpart, which is Ayala, I believe in one of the articles mentioned that for this year, they have appointed the very first female president in their company. So it's becoming becoming uh, possible at this point. So maybe in the past, it's something that is not um, happening or part not part of the reality. But I'm telling you, a lot of companies, global companies, are now responding into this uh, call. So I think we have to transition from that particular mindset that you have to fight for it, be assertive. Hmm. Be assertive. Fight for your right, but also be proactive in fighting for other people's right. Um, okay, this is a long one. Uh, do you foresee large corporations fulfilling the outlines given in the UN 2030 agenda focused around gender and race inclusivity? in order to mediate social pressures and potential negative influences on sales, oh, uh, if not followed, um, rather than to be generally concerned about the initiative of promoting a diverse and inclusive company culture. He said, for example, by hiring according to the guidelines, but truly entrusting them in the roles they are placed in. Very good question. And complex, <laughs> no? Okay, but <laughs> allow me to... Um address some of the key questions like, do you foresee large corporations fulfilling the outlines given in the UN 2030 agenda? I am not particularly sure if they can make it for the 2030 agenda because we're only talking about seven years right now. Uh, when UN launched the sustainable goals in 2016, they didn't expect pandemic. Yeah. The UN. And the pandemic also significantly affected the UN goals of 2030, specifically the uh, those that are closely related with uh, diversity, equality, and inclusion. Because as we all know, 
there were a lot of career shifts from one industry to another. Even in the hospitality industry, we can see the change of landscape because we have a lot of team members uh, because of pandemic chose to leave the hospitality industry and venture on uh, other industries. And therefore, there is now a different mix of workforce in all industries that I think will significantly affect the fulfillment of 2030 agenda. But I am still positive that the large corporations are still in it true to the commitment of contributing to this 2030 roadmap of UN. For instance, in our group, despite of the pandemic, we are still serious about the contribution. The, the question right now is, are we going to fulfill the 2030 agenda? I am not so sure yet. What I am sure right now is at present, it's very assuring that the global companies are still true to its commitment. The second part of this is, rather than to be genuinely be concerned about the initiative of promoting a diverse and inclusive company culture, for example, hiring, I still believe that culture is, we define it as some of our daily habits. As I keep on pointing out throughout the uh, master class, we are start, we have already started the conversation of BEI. The main challenge is how can we continue this conversation? And it's really up to us. It's really up to us. For example, by hiring according to, to the guidelines, but entrusting them in the roles they are placing. Again, we are a long way, we, we have a long way to go. We can really, we cannot expect one policy that will be applicable to all. And remember, DEI also has an a cultural uh, element. There are countries that are not yet mature to uh, fully support DEI. That's why in the World Economic Forum statistics that we have seen a while ago, in even the European countries, we are still talking about decades before we can fulfill the, we can close the gender uh, gap. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. I think that's all the questions and the time that we have today. Just a sincere thank you to Dr. R.L. Oh. Fernando Garcia for sharing his profound insights from today's guest lecture. It was an incredible masterclass and we've had the privilege of gaining a deep understanding of the past, the present, and what we're looking forward to in the future in terms of diversity, equality, and inclusion um, in general and also within the hospitality industry. To all of our participants, thank you for your active engagement. This has made this lecture truly special. Um, don't forget to or don't forget to stay connected with us on our social media to stay updated on our upcoming events and lectures. As we conclude today's session, we wish you um, an inspired day. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we look forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you so much, Dr. Garcia. Thank you so much as well. Everyone saying thank you <laughs> in the chat. Thank you.